PMP exam process question exercise. The main objective of this exercise is to test your knowledge and aptitude for the PMP exam. Today, we're gonna to begin with a few softball questions and here's your softball question. You'll see the countdown, I'll read the question to you and then you'll be able to answer. At the start of a hybrid project, in the planning phase, you have completed the risk register and a thorough assessment of the risk score. What should you do next? A, define the project deliverable clearly, B, conduct a retrospective, C, complete a work performance report of current status, and D, conduct a spike for the product backlog. The timer will begin. Your time is up. On the PMP exam, you want to use tools that are available to you to cross out and narrow down the best option. So using those tools and simulating that, let's take a look. Taking a look at the options, we have option A, and it says, define the project deliverable clearly. Well, the honest truth is that the project deliverable should already have been made clear. We should already have an idea of the project deliverable. So we're going to go ahead and cancel that because before you can do a thorough assessment of a risk score, you should have defined the project deliverable clearly way back in scope management. So it cannot be A. That is not the best thing to do next. B, conduct a retrospective. A retrospective is generally done in a hybrid project any time that it makes sense for the team to, although it's generally done at the end of a sprint. That is not to say it cannot be done at other points. So let's take a look at option C. Complete a work performance report of current status. A work performance report at the start of a hybrid project does not make much sense because you're still in the process of assessing the risks. So there couldn't possibly have been work done in earnest. For that reason, we will cancel option C. Option D, conduct a spike for the product backlog. Now, this doesn't make complete sense. First of all, we are at the start of a project. We haven't gotten into a sprint. And secondly, when we talk about a spike, it's generally for an item in the backlog, not the entire backlog. And we're just done with risk assessment. So this doesn't make much sense. You would do a risk-based spike somewhere in a sprint, and that will be for further discovery of a story or an item in the backlog. So D is not correct. It's not stated correctly, and it doesn't make sense. And therefore, in this first question, my friends, the answer is B, conduct a retrospective. Think about the fact that a retrospective could be a gathering to assess, discuss, and expand on ideas, upcoming issues, something that has just transpired. So the best option based on what you're given is B. Bear in mind that on the PMP exam, you're not always going to get the option that you expect to see. So in that regard, the best option is B, conduct a retrospective. Let's move on to another softball question before we get to a harder one. Next question. You are project manager working on a large scale IT infrastructure project. Midway in the project, you discover that your schedule has been delayed significantly. What is the best thing to do? Moving on to the next question, you are a project manager working on a large-scale IT infrastructure project. 
Midway in the project, you discover that your schedule has been delayed significantly. What is the best thing to do? A. Crash the project using scheduling best practices. B. Apply a backward pass to account for slack and fast track the schedule. C. Expedite delivery of items on the critical path following company policy. And D. Have the team generate a root cause analysis and generate options. The timer will begin. And your time is up. Let's take a look at the options. Again, using the process of elimination after understanding the question, we will select a crossout tool. And it says your schedule has been delayed significantly. Now, there's nothing in the question that tells us why the schedule has been delayed. So crash the project using scheduling best practices, though it sounds smart, is presumptuous because we don't know if adding resources to the project will actually make a difference. We don't understand the cause of the delay. It could be someone sitting on paperwork. It could be someone who is off sick. So we don't truly understand. B, apply a backward pass to account for slack and fast track the schedule. Now, while there is such a thing as forward passes and backward passes and leads and lags and slack and float, it is still presumptuous to say because you have calculated the slack, you understand what is happening with the schedule. Fast tracking the schedule is also presumptuous. So we will not go with either of those. C, expedite delivery of items on the critical path following company policy. Again, we don't know which items are on the critical path and if that will help the schedule. So C is again presumptuous. D, have the team generate a root cause analysis and generate options makes better sense. Here, we're going to do a root cause analysis to find why this is happening. And then we're going to generate options. And of course, we will find which option is best. When you're faced with questions like this on the PMP exam, I wanna give you a framework that you can use to better tackle questions, especially those that may seem far out. You can use the dig sieve approach, D-I-G-C-I-V. And that's a mnemonic for define the problem, identify the root cause, then generate alternatives. So here, defining the problem and identifying the root cause need to come first before you go into any alternatives. And that's why the best option was D. But after you've defined a problem and identified the root cause, then you can generate alternatives and choose the best alternative. So whenever you're going through questions, keep that in mind. In the real world, after we choose the best alternative, we will implement the alternative and we will verify that that alternative has been applied sensibly and it actually works. And that needs to be your approach when you tackle questions on the PMP exam. Let's move on to another question here. In a corporation undergoing a major business transformation to introduce a new product line, a project manager discovers that the projected demand may not meet initial forecasts due to market saturation. What should the project manager do next to manage this risk effectively? A, update the risk register to include this new information and assess the impact on the project's ROI. B, 
carry out risk identification with the project team and stakeholders to identify additional secondary or cascading risks on the project. C. Perform a quantitative risk analysis based on these forecasts and compute quantitative risk analysis information to make an informed decision. D. Consult the marketing department to revise the product launch strategy and perform a SWOT analysis to review the risk management plan. The timer will now begin. And our time is up. Now, let's first listen to the logic and the reasoning behind this before going into a more formal breakdown. What is the problem in this question? It reads, what should the project manager do next to manage this risk effectively? What exactly is the risk? that the projected demand may not meet initial forecasts. So again, using the process of elimination, this time we will start from the bottom. So consult the marketing department to revise the product launch strategy and perform a SWOT analysis to review the risk management plan. Well, the risk management plan is a plan that guides you on how to address risks on the project. It is not the risk register. So we may not have to adjust the risk management plan. And besides, a SWOT analysis is not necessarily used to address the risk management plan. It's used to identify risks in risk management. So D is not the best option. It contains incorrect information and it's presumptuous by consulting the marketing department immediately to revise the product launch strategy without any analyses. So we're gonna cancel D. It is not the best option, even though it sounds smart, but it contains incorrect option and is presumptuous because we find that we may not meet initial forecasts due to market saturation. But to combat the market saturation, there needs to be some analysis to understand. So we're gonna cancel D for now. Let's go to C. Perform a quantitative risk analysis based on these forecasts and compute quantitative risk analysis information. Well, first and foremost, we found a risk. We're not gonna jump straight into a quantitative risk analysis and we're not going to immediately compute quantitative risk analysis information. Instead, it would make sense to do some qualitative risk analysis, but that will come on the heels of at least putting that in the risk register. So C is not the best option. We're going to cancel that. We're going to check out option B. Carry out risk identification with the project team and stakeholders to identify additional secondary or cascading risks on the project? Well, think about it. What is done first is identifying a risk. And that is what we need to be focused on, that risk, that risk being dealt with. So option B, carrying out a risk identification is actually what the question is describing. 
because it said the PM discovers that the projected demand may not meet initial forecast. So that is actually what we're doing right now. So to say we do this all over again doesn't make sense. So we're going to cancel option B. We're going to get into A. What does it say? Update the risk register. Nothing wrong in that. To include this new information, nothing wrong in that. And assess the impact on the project's ROI. Well, it helps to know what is at stake. It helps to know how severe this risk is, juxtaposing it with the current understanding of our ROI. If it significantly impacts the ROI, then we know what to do, right? So we shouldn't be presumptuous, not meet initial forecasts due to market saturation is a wide net that we need to analyze further. So the best option that is not presumptuous and does not contain incorrect information is option A. Let's break it down further and listen to the extended breakdown. Correct answer A, rationale. Updating the risk register to include the new information about potential demand shortfall due to market saturation is the immediate and most effective step. This allows the project manager to document the risk, assess its impact on the project's return on investment, ROI, and determine necessary adjustments in the project strategy. This action ensures that the project team is aware of and can respond to changes in the market environment proactively. Option B is a valid step, but it would typically follow the initial updating of the risk register. Option C, performing a quantitative risk analysis, is also a critical step, but it assumes that the necessary data to perform this analysis effectively is immediately available, which may not be the case. Option D, consulting the marketing department to revise the launch strategy, is important, but would generally come after the risk has been formally recognized and its potential impacts assessed. Well, there you have the extended breakdown, my friends. I hope this has been of value to you. If it has, do hit the like button and subscribe. And if you're looking for questions that test you from end to end across all of the domains, people, process, and business, go on down to pmpdoctor.com. Let's study together and let's amp up your study routine. We have short six question tests for each task. There are 35 tasks six questions for each task and some of the quizzes have got additional questions that will be served when you take the quiz in more than one sitting. We also have two full mock exams, a little 90 question agile quiz and a bigger 130 question mini mock. Let's get PMP certified and let's amp up our business journey. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Smash the like button. I'll see you soon.